In our prior video, we looked at solving systems of linear differential equations using eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And the truth is, I left out part of the story. It's slightly different if we end up with eigenvalues that are equal to each other. This video is going to take a look at the question, what if we have repeated eigenvalues? And the problem is, as we're looking to solve systems of differential equations, or just differential equations in general, we're obsessed with this idea of linear independence. Our solutions must be linearly independent from each other, but if we end up with a repeated eigenvalue, we'll end up with a repeated eigenvector, and so our results are going to be completely dependent on each other. That's what we're going to attempt to fix by changing our solution form in the case of repeated eigenvectors to x is equal to c1 times our eigenvector k e to the lambda t, that part's still the same, plus, but because our second eigenvalue and vector are the same, we're going to write them as c2 times the eigenvector times t e to the lambda t, and that probably looks familiar to how we got independence when we weren't dealing with systems. But the difference is now we're going to add another vector p times e to the lambda t as well. The way we're going to define that extra p that we're going to have to go after is we're going to say where our a times lambda i times p is equal to k. Now this is really similar to how we found our k. To find k, we made a times lambda i times k equal to zero. And so it's going to feel very similar to that process, and then we can plug them into this form of our solution. So let's take a look at some examples where we can use this formula. Let's solve the differential system x prime equals 3x minus 18y and y prime equals 2x minus 9y. Well, initially, this is going to feel a lot like what we saw in the previous video. We're going to start by changing it to our matrix form, where capital X prime is equal to the coefficients of 3, negative 18, 2, and negative 9 times our solution matrix x that we're looking for. Then that coefficient matrix will help us find the eigenvalues, where we use 3 minus lambda, negative 18, 2, and negative 9 minus lambda. While well, multiplying diagonals to calculate that determinant, 3 minus lambda times negative 9 minus lambda minus negative 18 times 2 is a positive 36 has to equal 0. And solving this equation will help us find our eigenvalues. Negative lambda times negative lambda is lambda squared. Then we have 9 lambda minus 3 lambda is a positive 6 lambda. And then we've got a negative 27 plus 36 is a positive 9 equals 0 which factors to lambda plus 3 squared equals 0, which is where we get our repeated root that lambda equals negative 3. But it's repeated because of the square. So now I know I'm going to have to deal with the final solution slightly different than we did in our previous video. We're still going to start out by finding our eigenvector that goes with negative 3. So we've got our k of negative 3. When I plug negative 3 into the lambdas, we end up with 3 minus negative 3 is 6, negative 18, 2, and negative 9 minus negative 3 is negative 6. And we multiply that by our eigenvector k1, k2, and that has to equal 0. That k1, k2 is what we're looking for. 
So multiplying, we get 6k1 minus 18k2 equals 0. And 2k1 minus 6k2 equals 0. These should be linear multiples of each other, so we can pick either one. The second one is probably easiest to solve. I'll add the 6k2 to both sides, so 2k1 equals 6k2. And divide by 2 to get k1 equals 3k2. The more complex side is where I'm going to make my 1, so k2 is equal to 1. K1 then is going to be 3 times K2, which is 3. So my eigenvector K is equal to, make sure I put these in order, 3, 1. Now normally at this point we go after our second eigenvector, but there isn't a second eigenvector, so instead we're going to find the P matrix that will help us establish that linear independence. It's much the same way. We still are plugging in our eigenvalue of negative 3 in for lambda, giving us 6, negative 18, 2, negative 6 again. But this time we're going to solve for the P1, P2 that makes this equal to my eigenvector of 3, 1. So no longer is it going to equal 0, 0, but this time it's going to be 3, 1. Now when we multiply this out, we get 6p1 minus 18p2 is going to equal 3. And 2p1 minus 6p2 is going to equal 1. Again, these should be linear multiples of each other. So I'm going to pick the easier one, the one with the smaller numbers. And we're going to work to solve for one of the constants. It doesn't matter which one. Let's uh, solve for P1. So we'll add 6P2 to both sides. Gives us 1 plus 6P2. And then when I divide by 2, I get 1 half plus 3P2. This time, when I pick a convenient value for the complex side, which is definitely the left side, P2 is equal to... This time I can pick the number 0 because the other value, P1, will not be equal to 0. Notice 3 times 0 plus a half is 1 half. And so my vector P is equal to P1, P2, 1 half, 0. Now I have all the pieces I need to express my final solution. My final solution is C1 times our eigenvector of 3, 1, times e to the eigenvalue of negative 3t, plus C2, and now here's where the new linearly independent expression comes. We'll start off with the eigenvector again of 3, 1, times t e to the negative 3t. Again, that looks like what we saw before. The difference is now we're going to add the p vector, 1 half 0, times e to the eigenvalue of negative 3t. And so that's how we can take our repeated eigenvalues to create two linearly independent solutions for the general form of the solution to my system of linear differential equations. Let's try one more example so we can see that process work out. Let's try x prime equals 2x plus 4y, and y prime equals negative x plus 6y. Again, we should be really good at this point at the setup. We change it to a matrix. Capital X prime is equal to the coefficients 2, 4, negative 1, 6 times the solution matrix, which we're looking for. Then we go after the eigenvalues of that coefficient matrix, 2 minus lambda, 4, negative 1, and 6 minus lambda. 
and we calculate that determinant multiplying the diagonals 2 minus lambda times 6 minus lambda minus the other product which is negative 4 so we make it a plus 4 needs to equal 0. Multiplying out we get a positive lambda squared negative 2 lambda negative 6 lambda is negative 8 lambda and 6 times 2 is 12, 12 plus 4 is 16 equals 0. And sure enough, that's going to factor to lambda minus 4 squared. So we have lambda equals 4, but again, that's a double root, a repeated eigenvalue. Which means we're only going to get one linearly independent eigenvector out of it. Let's go ahead and find that eigenvector from the k's using the eigenvalue of 4. Plugging into our lambda, the 4, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 4, negative 1, and 6 minus 4 is 2. Times our eigenvector that we're looking for, k1, k2, should equal the zero matrix. So we have negative 2, k1, plus 4, k2, equals 0. And negative k1 plus 2, k2, equals 0. That second equation is clearly easier to work with, so we'll add k1 to both sides to get 2k2 equals k1. Picking a convenient value for the complex looking side of 1 tells me that k1 then is 2 times that, which is 2. And so my actual eigenvector k is equal to 2, 1. Again, normally from here, we would go after the eigen, the second eigenvector, but there is no second eigenvector, so we're going to have to do the p situation now. Still using 4 in for the lambdas, we're going to end up with negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, times p1, p2, and that's going to equal the eigenvector we just found, the vector 2, 1. Multiplying out, we get negative 2, p1, plus 4, p2, equals 2. And negative p1, plus 2, p2, equals 1. That second equation is going to be easier to work with. I'm going to add p1 to both sides to get 2, p2 equals 1 plus p1. Subtract 1 from both sides and I get 2 p2 minus 1 equals p1. And so that left side being more complex, I'll start with p2. This time I'm allowed to pick 0 because my p1 then is not 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So that tells me my vector p p1, p2 is negative 1, 0. Then we can put it all together with our formula that x is equal to c1 times the eigenvector of 2, 1, e to the eigenvalue of 4t, plus c2 times, we'll still do the eigenvector of 2, 1, this time it's times t, e to the 4t, and then we add to that the p vector of negative 1, 0, times just the e to the 4t. And then this becomes our solution to the system of linear differential equations. So we're making a minor adjustment to our process if we end up with a double root or a repeated eigenvalue. Now it's your turn to practice these. Go ahead and look at the assignment. Good luck to you.